Okay, so role-based security. Uh, the tabular model uses the notion of roles to manage security. And a role is just a grouping of one or more users that have the same privileges. So um, something, something important to note here, when I'm saying users, um, what I'm referring to is a Windows domain user or group. Uh, you can't define your own logins and passwords like you can with SQL Server's SQL Server authentication. Um, so the role-based security model will really meet most of your security requirements that are out there. Um, and you're going to use it for scenarios like um, you need to allow you know, the administrators within your company to, or the development environment, full rights to the system. Um, it also lets you provide just read-only rights to a given database for, let's say, your business analyst team. Um, another scenario that it'll handle is, you know, say your ETL processes need the rights to um, just process the database, but you want to, you know, you're security conscious and you don't want that account to be able to read the data within it. You know, that's something else that can be handled through role-based security. Okay, so we kind of covered the scenarios there and what it is, but, you know, how do you actually do it? So, um, you know, at the, the core of it all, you have... Uh, an analysis services tabular instance. Now, on a given server, you can have more than one instance. Um, however, it isn't all that common in production due to the fact that analysis services tabular um, has a, a high RAM or memory requirement. Um, so it's not common that you'll find more than one tabular instance on a given server. But regardless, um, at the instance level, there's something called the server administrator role, which will give full rights to um, the tabular instance as well as any databases within the instance. Um, so the next level of uh, role-based security would be at the database level. So uh, at the database level you can assign permissions for read, process, and also administrator rights at the database level. And they pretty much do exactly what they sound like. So read permissions allow you to read the data within that database, um, but however you couldn't process the, the model uh, and you couldn't alter the model. And so the process rights will, you know, again, <laughs> as it sounds, uh, it lets you process the model, but you can't query the data, and you want to be able to alter the model. And finally, the administrator uh, rights, you know, gives you full rights to the system, so you can read, process, and alter the model. Um, something else that you need to be aware of is that there's no explicit way to deny privileges to a user. So the user either has rights or they don't. Uh, something else that you could see is that, um, so if a user is defined in more than one security role, um, they will have the privileges assigned with the highest security access. So for example, say we have role one, which we've assigned read privileges to, and we also have role two, which has administrator privileges, and a given user is applied to both of these roles. Um, what's going to happen here is that the administrator privileges will win out and that user will have you know full access to to that database okay so that's enough discussion here let's see how it actually works okay so what i'm showing you now is um, sql server data tools for business intelligence so it's in the visual studio um, environment and what we're looking at here is the project as well as the data model that we'll be working through in this webinar. Um, so what we have here at the center, um, we have our reseller sales table, which is going to contain sales transactions for sales from all our resellers. Um, it's going to contain you know, various measurements like extended amount, discount amounts, um, shipping costs, things like that. And then surrounded by this table, we have what we refer to as our dimensions. Um, and really what they do is describe uh, the sale that took place. So right here we have our territory table. And really it's just going to describe the, uh, the region, the country, and the group where the sale took place. Um, some other tables that we have in our model uh, for this webinar are the reseller. Um, we have some data about the promotions that were um, in place at the time of a given sale. Um, we also are, we have the product table, which tells us which product was sold in the transaction. And then we have our date table. So that's our model. Um, 
And what you do to implement role-based security from here is you're going to click on this model tab up here, and you're going to click the roles, uh, which brings up the role manager um, uh, GUI. And from here, we'd be able to define our database level roles. Um, but I'm going to stop here. I'm going to jump over to SQL Server Management Studio, which is another place that we can define our roles. So um, if you recall, I said that you can define your administrative level role. And let me show you how you would do that. So you can only do that within SQL Server Management Studio. And what I did was I connected to my, and let me just disconnect so you can kind of see how that's done. All you're going to do is go to Connect, Analysis Services. You're going to apply the server name and, and instance name if app applicable. Um, however, I just have one instance on here, so I'm going to hit Connect. And from here, I'll be able to expand and see any databases that are on this instance. And to set the administrative um, role, what I'm going to do is right-click at the instance. I'm going to go to Properties. From there, I'm going to click on the Security page. And you can see who I have defined as administrators. So my, my uh, domain is Martini, and I have the administrator user as well as the Anthony user as defined as administrators on this instance. Now, if we wanted to apply any database level roles, what we're going to do is go, we're going to expand the database, and we're going to see this roles icon here. And you can right click, and you could select new role. So now while you can create database level roles from within Management Studio, it's something that I'm going to recommend that you do not do. Um, and the reason being for that is that you should create your database level roles within Visual Studio. Um, reason being, you know, in, in Management Studio, any roles that you would define, um, if you were then to go back into your project in Visual Studio here and then deploy this project up to the server, it's going to remove any roles that weren't explicitly defined in the project. So there's your tip. So creating database level roles, do them within the uh, SQL Server Data Tools project. Okay, so let's go through and we'll create two simple roles in here to show you how that's done. So within the role manager, I'm going to click New. And I'm going to define a data readers role. From here, I could give that role various permissions, none, read, read and process, just process, or just administrator. For this, I'm going to select just read. Now, down below, you can see I have two tabs. I have this row filters tab, which we're going to get to a little later on in the demo. Um, but for now, I want to highlight this members tab. So this is where we apply the role to a given set of users or a given set of user groups. So for here, what I want to do is we're going to say that we have a scenario where I want to give all my business analysts um, read access to this database. 